Hello guys, welcome back to another Pricey P Roblox Studio tutorial. How's everyone doing today? Today's tutorial, we're going to answer one of our viewers question. In this prior tutorial, Roblox hinge door with vertical hinge, a viewer named Seawin commented how to make the door come back to its original place. Let's now go to studio and see how we can do that. I'm sure there are many different ways to do it. Today I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. So the first way to do it would be to have something like this. This is something we did in one of our prior tutorials uh, many months ago. So basically we have a door here with a button and when the player clicks on the button, the door automatically opens and then it closes on its own. Let's take a look at how we did that. And I'm gonna go over it very quickly because we did this already in, a, in one of our prior tutorials and you can refer to that prior tutorial for more details. So here we have a model called button door, which is this entire thing here. And if I expand that, you see we have a button here and we have the two walls and the door. If I expand one of the wall, you see it has a hinge constraint to attach the door to the, the wall. Our hinge constraint, we use a servo motor to open the door automatically. So when the player clicks on the button, we have a script in here, which would open the door 120 degrees, and then it's gonna wait for seven seconds, and then it's gonna close the door back to the original position. We can play test and take a look. So here we are, I'm gonna go and click on the button now, and nothing happens. Let me click again. Oh, what's going on? Let me check for errors. Hinge constraint is not a valid member of part workspace wall. Oh, I think I know what happened because I just grouped them all into this model. So let me go back to the script. So let's take a look at this script real quick. Click equals to script.parent. This is the script. Click is the click detector. Hinge equals to game.workspace. So game workspace wall. There is no wall, that, that's the problem. So it has to go to the button door before it gets to the wall. So workspace, button door. Then we're gonna have wall, button door, wall, hinge constraint. Let's play again, take a look. Let me close this window right here. I'm gonna go and click on it. And it opens. I go through. Let's wait for seven seconds. And it closes. It goes back to the original position. All right, guys, so that's one way to do it. And we learned a very valuable lesson today is that when you script all these parts separately, right? and they all work. When you group them into a model like I did over here, so all these were separate before I grouped them into the model. When you do that, you need to change the script because it's not gonna find uh, the item because now you have a button door model in between. So keep in mind, you're gonna need to go back to the script and make that change when you group them into a model. Now let's move on to our second method of doing this, which is gonna be our lesson for today, where we're gonna learn how to use the spring constraint to move the door back. So here you see I have, let me close this. I have a door and I have a wall. So those are just two rectangular parts. Let me now click on the door. I'm gonna move the door. I'm gonna separate the door from the wall. Let me move in a little bit closer. And now I'm gonna to go to my model menu tab, go to the constraint section, click on constraint details to turn that on. And we're gonna click on the down arrow under the create. We're gonna select hinge. So we're gonna add a hinge to the, the wall and the door to attach the door to the wall, right? I'm gonna put my first attachment here. And the second attachment is gonna be on the door. 
and then we're going to need to rotate the attachments. So I'm going to click on attachment zero on the wall and click on rotate. And remember guys to put the attachment zero on the wall. If you put it on the door, then it's going to work the opposite of what I'm doing right here. So put it on the wall and now we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. So the yellow arrow is pointing up. We're going to do the same thing to the door. So go to the door, click on attachment one. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees so that the yellow arrow is pointing up. Now click on hinge constraint. We're going to go to the properties. We're going to click on limits and able. And then we're going to pick our angles here. So you can see this angle right here, right? If I pick um, maybe 15 degrees for both the lower and upper angle. You, you can see the, the green brackets. That's where the door is going to go to and it's going to stop the, the brackets. The green brackets here is going to stop the door from going any further. If you don't put in the brackets, the door is going to go through the wall. Let me now put the door back and then we're going to play test to test. Let's take a look. Okay, so here we are and I'm going to try and push the door. And you can see that it's actually working the opposite the way we expected, like the door to go to the green brackets. It looks like it's working the opposite today for some reason. I don't know why. Honestly, I haven't played with this for a long time, but I think there is a glitch in Roblox. Anyway, so we're, we're just going to make some adjustment to make it work. Let's go back. Again, click on the hinge constraint. You can see the bracket, the, the green brackets. That's where the door is supposed to go to, but apparently it's the opposite today for some reason. I don't know why. So instead of choosing 15 degrees, what I'm going to do is see the entire thing is 180 degrees. So I'm going to take 180 minus 15. That's going to give me 165 degrees. I'm going to change this to 165 on the lower and upper angle. And let's take a look again. So you can see now it works the way we wanted it. It's just that it doesn't match the bracket. Anyway, we got it to work the way we wanted it. See, if you look again here, you, you see the green brackets are going in the opposite direction now. So that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But anyway, that's how it works right now. Uh, we're done with the, the hinge constraint. Now to bring the door back to the original position, we would need to go to the constraints section again. Click on that and click on the down arrow again we're going to add a spring constraint the first attachment i'm going to place on the wall at the corner here and the second attachment i'm going to place on the door at the corner here so that's one spring constraint now we're going to go to the other side of the this door and we're going to do the same thing again so I'm going to go and click on my spring constraint again. We're going to place the first attachment at the same location as the previous attachment. And the second attachment pretty much at the same location as the previous attachment. Now if we look here, we should see two different spring constraints. And basically we're using the same attachment zero and attachment one for both spring constraints. So we only have one attachment one. Well, that one is at the bottom. This one is at the top here. And this one is the one at the top here. Let's play and take a look. You can see we see the spring at the top here, so we can fix that. Okay. 
and the door still doesn't come back. So we're gonna need to fix that too. The first fix is pretty easy. I'm just gonna select both spring constraints and we're gonna go to the properties window. We're gonna turn off visible. You're not gonna see it here, but when you play test, you're gonna see that the spring is gonna disappear. The second fix, again, with both spring constraints selected, is we wanna change both at the same time. We're gonna go to the properties window and go down. The damping, you can leave it as two or you can change that to zero. I believe the lower the damping, the more the door is gonna bounce back when it hits its limit. But the thing that we wanna change here is we wanna change the stiffness of the spring. So instead of 1000, which is not enough, we're gonna change it to 20. Thousand. And right now I also noticed there is a limits enable here. So probably we could have used this one instead of the one in the hinge constraint, but it really doesn't matter. If you like, you can test it out. I'm not gonna do it right now. I think we're all set. Let's play and take a look. There you can see the door opens and it moves back. Let's take a look again. It swings, swings, and it moves back. So it doesn't exactly go to the original position, but it's close enough. It's, it's uh, realistic. It's like a swinging door. Push it again. It swings, swings, and it stays there. For some reason on this side, it's a bit stronger than the other side. There it goes, let me try again. Opens all the way. This time I gotta push it back. It swings, swings, and it prefers this side over the other side. I notice. But anyway, that's the way it works. Now, if you wanna turn this into a double swinging door, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the door and the wall, and we're gonna do a Control D to duplicate. And we're gonna click on move. We're gonna move this this way, and I'm gonna click on rotate. We're gonna rotate it 180 degrees and we'll move it back in. Let's turn collision on. Move it back in. And for the last time, let's play and take a look. There's our double swinging door. Kind of like in the restaurant, you gotta go in on the right and you gotta go out on the right. Alright guys, that's how you use spring constraints in Roblox. Thank you for watching, we will see you again soon. Take care everyone.